What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, a video you guys have been asking for for quite a while now. Today, I'm gonna do a boat tour of my new Skeeter FXR20. All right guys, uh, you guys have been asking for quite a while now, a couple months. I've had this boat now, I don't know, uh, three or four or five months, I can't remember, but, but I got it dialed in. And uh, if you guys don't follow us on other platforms, you might have not known when I picked this boat up. So uh, all you guys asking about the Champion, the 210, um, that boat did not go anywhere. Um, just having some work done on it. You know, uh, Matt and I are traveling more and more and that boat's getting older, it's a 2008. So I was having issues with the trailer, needed some fiberglass work. I had the all new carpet put in it. Um, but those of you guys who are familiar with the Champions know that once that mega link goes out, the computer in that boat, if it goes out, you basically have a 21 foot paperweight. So Matt had to completely rewire his Champion. He still got his. Um, and I haven't done that yet, but I probably will be doing that. But that boat's not going anywhere. It's not for sale, anything like that. That boat has earned its place in my garage. Um, so it's just getting a little uh, uplift. Like I said, new gel or, or clean up the gel, new carpet. Um, I'm gonna put some reflex in it. The guys over at Hennessy Outdoor Electronics are just gonna trick that thing out to the max. So it should be one of the, the baddest 210s uh, around once it's all said and done. But it's been in the shop for several months now, which is why I've been running this Skeeter. You know, I bought this Skeeter, like I said, four or five months ago. It's a 2022 model. Um, Matt actually just purchased his too, and it, it got his rigs. So you'll be seeing his in upcoming videos. But um, we get a chance to ride and drive and fish out of a lot of boats. And out of all the boat brands on the market, I really like the way the Skeeter uh, was laid out. And we're gonna kind of cover all that. We're gonna go from bow to the stern, gonna cover everything in this boat because I basically have it set up. Uh, I basically turned those Hennessy guys loose on this boat as well, how to make some custom mounts for me, but we're gonna cover all that. But I have this boat set up how I want it. Um, and realistically, guys, it gets down to time on the road. You know, I, I uh, I made some notes. I pulled my trip log so far for this year. Let me pull up my notes real quick. Um, so far from in 2023 through February 28th, 8,437 road miles on this boat right here, on this trailer. And like I said, with that champion, it was just, uh, it was a stress thing. I didn't want to be broken down. I don't want to be changing bearings or axles or having any issues and having a boat under warranty, having a motor under warranty, just let me sleep better at night, especially on these long trips. In the last two months, either myself solo or with Matt, 10 states, I fished in seven different states, two different countries, Texas and Mexico, and like I said, almost 8,500 miles in two months. So Matt and I, we hit the road running. We travel, we fish, we film all over this country, we haven't even hit west yet. We haven't went up north yet. That's all coming this year, hopefully. Um, but it was time to get a new updated boat. Something with some better axles, better warranty. And I, like I said earlier, it just helps me sleep better at night. And I couldn't be more excited. Uh, this boat has big fish juju. Um, hopefully you guys have seen some of those 40 pound bags we've put in it. Um, we have filled these Skeeter live wells to the brim with fat, fat, large mouth. Uh, if you guys haven't seen those videos, I'll link some of those down below in the video description. But like I said, I could not be more stoked on this boat. Kind of has that tactical-ish uh, kind of color scheme, kind of that flat gray with the red. Um, but yeah, so enough talking. Let's uh, jump in the boat and we'll kind of go through the setup. Like I said, had some custom mounts made. Uh, Really, really happy overall with this boat, the way it lays out, laid out, the way it rides, the way it fishes. Um, so let's jump in the boat. We'll start at the bow and work our way back and uh, show you guys my new FXR20. So starting at the bow, uh, I guess we'll work with the trolling motor and then work our way backwards. Um, 
on this boat, I went everything Humminbird. I like that one boat network. I like that I can waypoint off of any uh, piece, basically piece uh, in this network off of my 360, off of my live, off my trolling motor, my units. Uh, I like how everything talks and works together. Uh, so, Ultrex. Spotlock, one of the originators of the originator of uh, Spotlock, right? I fish a lot uh, offshore, coming from out west, fishing those deep, clear uh, highland reservoirs. I love spotlocking and fishing offshore. With that said, I got Mega Live and 360 on the target lock. I did a video earlier this year uh, showing the target lock, the features, how I can work the live transducer separate from my trolling motor if I choose to and go back and forth control with my uh, troll motor if I choose as well a little faster sweep and then if I want to spot lock I can spot lock with my trolling motor and then turn that live transducer independently to try and stay on those shad balls or find those fish or the brush pile to cover that sort of stuff so target lock mega live 360 and an Ultrex and then up front this guy right here, this is a custom mount by Hennessy. Uh, you can see, well you guys can't see, I'll show you guys later. Tactical Bassett engraved right here, Hennessy Outdoor Electronics. This thing, I can shake my whole truck and boat. I could stand up, the thing is super, super strong. Uh, up front, I have a Solix 15 and an Apex 16. On this guy right here, I run my mapping and 2D sonar or once I'm on my spot or I'm spot locked or whatever, I'll use my 360 on here. And then this unit down here is basically strictly for my Mega Live. The reason that I went with an Apex for the Live unit, uh, it's a cleaner, clearer unit. It is a true HD screen versus the Solix. So it is quite a bit more crisp. And uh, you'll see once we get to the console, I went with some Apexes back there as well for the, the side imaging, down imaging, just a crisper unit. And then the bonus feature, it has two HDMI, uh, an input and an output. So if I want to uh, record my screen off to a recorder or I wanna put a camera down, see what's underwater, that is my main unit for that. Again, super happy with these custom, custom mounts. Now this is stuff that you guys can get. You can go onto their website, we'll leave, leave a link down there. Um, they are really, really good guys and have one of the best shops, if not the best shop in the entire country. So many elite guys, so many MLF guys, touring pros get their boats rigged. And luckily for Matt and I, they're based out of Dayton, Tennessee, right here in our hometown. And uh, Brig and Bryce and the rest of the crew, they're, they're top notch guys. Um, so really excited how this custom mount turned out. Now. Let's jump to the console, we'll jump to the back, then we'll jump in the boat, show you the compartments, kind of how I have everything set up. All right guys, so at the console, I have dual Apex 13s. Again, like I talked about earlier, the Apex just has that true HD screen, uh, and it's a lot crisper uh, when I'm looking at side imaging, down imaging, that sort of stuff. Again, completely custom uh, dual mount by Hennessy. Uh, the, I can't stress this enough, guys. These things are bomb proof. They are rock solid. Again, almost, what was it, 8,500 miles on the road. And this thing, I mean, they are, they are stout. So, dual mount. Um, typically for this setup right here, I'm running mapping and 2D sonar. Over here, I'm running side imaging to, uh, and down imaging. If I'm just doing mapping here, then I'll run 2D and down here side by side. Uh, the other thing, if you guys haven't checked out the Lake Master, the new chips, the VX technology, they are lightning fast. Super fast zooming in, super fast zooming out. Some really, really cool features. Now, instead of just being able to depth highlight one area or one depth, now you can do up to four. All different color palettes. You can do contour shading, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, you can see right here, I have my my uh, shallow depth range set at four foot. That's just a safety, so I don't hit anything. Again, with that uh, water fluctuating, I'm always adjusting my water level offset to drop my, my, my unit depth with the depth of the water. And then here I got my depth highlight 
set at 12 to 14 foot. So that's the, that's the area that I was fishing, the depth that I was fishing. Um, what else? Down here I got the hot foot. I do have this cable coming out. This is an HDMI out cable that goes into my recorder so I can re record stuff for you guys. Uh, down here I got my fusion radio, live well. Um, awesome, awesome features, the dry dock switch. I can turn this on and it takes water, uh, air and blows through all my compartments. So if I get water or moisture in there, um, that really, really helps out, especially in the wintertime when it's raining. But this is the setup. Um, not too tall, it's no safety issues with being able to see over. Very happy with how this turned out and how solid this is. Now let's jump to the back. All right, now the back of the boat. Start with this guy right here. The Yamaha SHO 250. Uh, that is a motor that both Matt and I repowered our champions with and absolutely loved. No issues, need to knock on some wood, but through our last champions, through our newer champions, uh, we have not had any issues with this guy right here. This is the new, uh, the new show, the new VMAX as of last year, two years ago. Uh, but through the shows, we've had no issues. And that means a lot to us as, as we have time on the road travel, so much money invested, um, we can't be breaking down and that sort of thing. So uh, that show is a must for us. And the other big deal for us with Yamaha is how much emphasis they have on conservation as a company with the right waters. Basically, they're fighting for us, for you and I, for the anglers to secure uh, fishing rights, fishing areas, they invest money uh, in conservation so that us, the upcoming generations can enjoy the outdoors like it's meant to be. So that's just an, an added benefit to running the, the Yamaha on the boat. Uh, again, conservation is a huge deal for me. You guys know, some of you guys might not know that I was a game warden or a conservation uh, officer in my previous job, and I loved it, you know? It's all about teaching you guys to catch more fish, teaching your kids, uh, loved ones to catch more fish so that we continue to grow fishing, the sport, the best sport in the world, to grow it as a whole and get it bigger. The more people out fishing, the better for you and I and the better for this world, I believe. Okay, Raptors, um, got the Hennessy light up top, the Raptors, um, I absolutely love the Raptors, it's versus the Talon, it's hydraulic versus electronic, totally up to you, this is an articulated arm so it kind of drops down, let me see if I drop it down for you guys, you guys can see. I mean, this thing will basically lift the boat almost up off the trailer. It is that strong. Um, just the cool technology that the Raptors have integrated with uh, auto sensing the movement of the boat, rough water, hard bottom, that sort of stuff is why I made the change, the switch uh, from the Champion, from Talons to the Raptors on the Skeeter. Absolutely love them. And uh, what else back here? Got some uh, DD26, just some pretty heavy duty uh, steering stabilizers and then motor tote type of deal uh, for, again, traveling down the road, putting on all those road miles. Uh, it's a lot, it's an investment. You know, touring guys know you, you're on the road a lot and uh, when you have that much time invested, you don't want to have something stupid or something break and that just kind of ruins your whole trip. So. Um, I'd like to show you guys the battery compartment. I'll show you guys how I have this all set up. So let me get the camera set up and I'll show you guys this compartment back here with my batteries, pumps, and all that good stuff. All right, so guys, this is probably um, one of the most important areas on the boat. And we are talking about the battery compartment. Over here, I have three lithium 120 amp hour batteries for my trolling motor. Uh, amp hours, if you don't understand what amp hours are, that's basically how much power that battery can hold. And based on each unit, each unit uses so many amp hours per hour, so much power per hour, and you can kind of do the math to see how much battery, how much juice you need. So we got 120 amp hour, three uh, lithiums over here, 
And then right here, I have two, um, these are just AGM batteries. This is the, the Odyssey, probably one of the baddest cranking batteries on the market. Again, I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything. It's just a battery that our buddies run, that Matt and I have run for several years. Um, but here's what's cool about it. So I have my cranking battery and I have my electronics battery. Both of them are 100 amp hours, but I run them in parallel. So when I'm charging, they're not in parallel, so they're charging individually. But when I'm on the water, flip these guys right here, now I'm in, now I'm in parallel. So basically I have double the battery life. So I just got back from a trip. I didn't charge for uh, basically two and a half days. I only fished two days, but two and a half days and I didn't have to charge and I ran and fished all day. When I'm running, the big motor's charging these batteries. Um, but if I want the clearest possible picture for my electronics, then I can come back here and separate these. That way there's no interference with the motor on my electronics. For the most part, I run these in parallel, so I have double the power. And if I need ultra clear on my front graphs, then I will run these out of parallel and then put them back in when I go to run. But that is a uh, really important battery power, especially with today's electronics, how much, how much juice they take. But I wanted to show you guys all of that. All right, guys, for this next area, I'm gonna show you. This whole deck is padded, which is super nice. Didn't have that on the Champion. I definitely have ha having that added. Once you have a padded deck, uh, you don't wanna go back. It just saves your lower back, saves your knees, your ankles, especially when you're fishing all the time. So main compartment, again, like I said, I'm just getting back from a road trip, Florida. I got some boxes I still haven't pulled out. Um, line. All sorts of stuff in here. What's cool about these, these actually come out. So you can leave your boxes in here and pull the whole compartment out. That's my main compartment. Over here, rod locker. Not very many rods in there right now. Um, still got to empty those out, but that's where I keep all my rods. And then over here, this compartment right here. I did empty that one out. That's where I keep all of my backstock uh, soft plastics, my scales. Um, I always carry two scales. What else? Um, backstock line. Sometimes I'll put my seat in there if it's going to be windy uh, or I'll keep it back there. But that's just where my extra swim baits go. And then right here, a box. Oh, we still got to empty this one out. Got all my Florida baits in there. But it's nice because you can take this whole thing out carry it into your room, hotel room, garage, wherever you're working on tackle, uh, pull the soft plastics, that you're, it comes with dividers, you can pull the soft plastics you think you're gonna be using, um, rig up baits, super glue, bait knockers, all that stuff goes right there. Um, what else do we got? Down here, got a trash can. I actually don't use it as a trash can. That's where I keep all of my uh, backup GoPro stuff, ropes, whatever and then right here got a little bit of a ice chest got some dude wipes waters all that good jazz back over here this is where i keep all my life jackets life jackets uh throwable throw cushion over here's all my tools air horn spare prop and then back over here i'm not sure if you saw earlier that's where i keep my spare prop for my trolling motor and it's also where i keep uh, a voltmeter to, to check my batteries and any tools i might need for back there and of course the skeeter live well you guys have seen this view quite a bit this year uh, i took the divider out because not doing any co-angler tournaments or anything like that and we want plenty of room for those giant bass so there it is, guys. There is the tour of the uh, of the Skeeter. You guys have been asking for it. Uh, one thing I do want to emphasize, you guys have had quite a few questions on our electronics videos about the clarity of my graphs. Uh, it doesn't matter where or who you have rig your graphs, make sure you have them run new wire. Brig over here at Hennessy, he runs six gauge wire and 10 gauge to the console. So all the way up front, 
heavy duty wire. That's gonna clean up your image. It's gonna uh, eliminate any power issues or lack thereof. And uh, so have a harness put in, have a dual harness, a new harness put in, uh, run that new wire, because these, these units, today's units, doesn't matter which brand you're using, uh, the better wire will give you a clearer, better picture. But there it is, guys. That is the Skeeter. Um, all in all, very uh, happy with this boat. Uh, the Champion's not going anywhere. Again, that'll stay in the garage. Probably when I get it back, who knows, here in the next couple months, I'll uh, have to show you guys, do a tour of that boat as well because uh, I updated basically everything on it and uh, it's looking good. Like I said, new carpet, putting some reflex up front, some padded deck, I'm sorry, reflex down there in the cockpit area. Gonna do some laser engraving. But uh, this guy right here, I love this boat. Uh, we've already stuck some really, really big fish in it. So uh, those of you guys that get new boats or buy boats know that it just seems like some boats kind of have that big fish juju and I'm happy to, to say that this one has it. But guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. I will try to get to those and answer those as soon as possible. But if you see us out on the water, you see this gray and red Skeeter, come say hi and uh, we'd love to show it to you and uh, let you guys check it out. Until next time, guys, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we will see you guys on the next video.